Dude, look at the juice. This is crazy. Well, they so have sausages. It's so juicy, I mean, yeah. just, I mean, it, yeah, it's so juicy. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're cooking something really special. We're cooking Iberico, or Iberico, pork spare ribs. Look at that marbling. Got two racks of these Iberico ribs, and then I went down to Costco because I need a point of comparison. We just got the regular old Costco pork spare ribs, St. Louis cut, to compare them to because we're not really going to know how special they are until we compare them to the ones that I'm always used to eating. So these look incredible. I need to do just a little bit of trimming, and then I'm going to season with just salt and pepper because I want the flavor of the meat to shine through, and I want to have an accurate point of reference because I've cooked, I don't know, thousands of racks of spare ribs with just salt and pepper. I want to see how this compares with that same seasoning. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other racks of ribs, and I'm gonna put them on the 1975T from Workhorse Pits. We'll talk more about that later, but they're going on at 225 degrees. All right, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna run it like I usually run rib cooks. So we're gonna start off at 200 to 225 degrees. I'm gonna keep the temperature in between there. And we're using pecan wood, if you're wondering. It's my favorite cooking wood. I like it especially on ribs. And we're gonna go 200 to 225 for the first three and a half, four hours. And at that point, I'm gonna crank it up to 275 degrees to try to get a little bit of pullback on the bones. And the reason for that is because I want the meat to plump up on the bone. So each bite you take is gonna have more meat in it and it just makes it more enjoyable. Also, one more thing is I'm gonna be spraying with apple cider vinegar at about the two hour mark, I'll start doing that. So generally I'll put a log on, I'll open it up, I'll spray the ribs, but I just wanna keep everything nice and moist on the outside, I don't want anything to dry out. I wanna thank today's sponsor, Made In. Made In makes professional quality cookware for the at-home chef. Now you see all the smokers and grills I have, well most of the cooking I do is actually inside. So to do that cooking, I want the best quality tools I can get. And for me, that's made in. When I first started using them, I couldn't believe how much better they were than the pans that I was using before. The nonstick pan is infinitely superior to the one that I was using before because the, the old one didn't heat evenly. This one does. The old one, the nonstick coating would scratch off. This one doesn't. The stainless steel pan that I've used from them has been amazing. And then finally, the carbon steel pan is a real game changer. So I was somebody who always used cast iron to sear steaks. But with the carbon steel pan, I realized that I get all the benefits of cast iron. It's lighter, it's more convenient, and it looks awesome. So this carbon steel pan, you season like you would cast iron, and you don't have to worry about any kind of toxic chemicals or anything like that. When I'm searing steaks, sometimes I'll do it outside over the coals on the grill, and this thing stays cool enough that I can grab it with my bare hand, unlike the cast iron that just gets super, super hot. So for me, this is a game changer product. With products this good, it's no wonder that Made In has over 70,000 five-star reviews. Now there are cheaper cookware sets out there, but none of them can compete with the quality of what you get in Made In. And Made In is offering my viewers a special discount. If you click on the link in the description below, you'll get 15% off of your first order. The only cookware I use is Made In, so I suggest you take advantage of that discount. It's been about three and a half hours, so let's open this up and take a look. All right, at this point, we're gonna bump up the temperature to 275 and see if we can get some pullback and some good fat render. Let's talk about what makes Iberico pork so special. There are two things that relate to fat that make it super juicy and very succulent, a really desirable meat to be cooking. So the first is the amount of fat that it has. So it has a lot of intramuscular marbling. And a lot of times on pork, you don't really see a lot of marbling. So you could have 
uh, a pork butt, say, and there are chunks of fat, but within the muscle texture itself, there's not really marbling the way you would see on a really high quality steak or something like that. So the Iberico pork has marbling, first off, so it has a lot of fat. And the second reason it's special is because the kind of fat that it has is gonna be slightly different than what you're gonna get with commodity pork. So the fat on the Iberico pork starts to melt at a lower temperature, much like Wagyu does when you're talking about beef. So this really is like the Wagyu of pork. Now, when I was trimming, I realized that, you know, some of the fat that I was touching was starting to melt and starting to leave grease on my gloves. That's because it melts at a really low temperature. And it's in part due to the diet that they feed these animals. So traditionally they're fed acorns and chestnuts and things like that. But what that leads to is a very soft, very easily renderable fat. And for barbecue nuts like me, that means a juicier bit of barbecue in the end. To illustrate just how much more fat this Iberico pork has in it, I have the packages that the Costco ribs came in and then the Iberico ribs came in. So the Costco ribs for a four ounce serving, it has 310 calories and 26 grams of fat. Whereas these Iberico ribs for the same four ounce serving, it's 540 calories and 49 grams of fat. So that's almost double the fat, which means we're gonna have juicy barbecue in a couple hours. A lot of you are probably wondering about this new smoker. It's actually not my smoker. So a subscriber actually bought this and had it sent to me to do some videos with, and then we're gonna send it to him. Now, the reason I haven't made content with it yet, and this is the truth, is because I was gonna to wait to put out any content with it until I placed my own order for one. So there's gonna be a full review coming in the future, but I'll just give you a couple really brief thoughts on this thing. It works super, super well. It cooks like a big offset, and it just wants to work with you instead of working against you. A lot of times in backyard smokers, you're fighting with the fire the whole time. With this one, it just wants to do the right thing. You adjust the temperature by changing the amount of fuel you have in there. And it just is a great cooker. It's made out of three eighths inch thick steel. So it is a beast. You don't ever have to worry about this thing wearing out on you. The door is pretty heavy, but we'll do a full review in the future. This is the first cook that we're doing on video. We're gonna do a few more and we're also gonna do some head to heads. We're gonna do this, versus the Franklin, versus the modified Brazos, versus a fat stack. And then finally, I'm, I'm hoping this works out, I wanna put this thing up against the mill scale 94 and do a head to head cook off. But after we do more cooks and after I have just a lot of experience with it, I'm gonna let you guys know in a full review exactly what my thoughts are, its pros, its cons, etc. But so far, I give it top marks. All right, these have great color and we're gonna wrap them up. We're gonna wrap them in foil and the way I like to cook ribs, I like to do almost all the cooking unwrapped and then just at the end to get a little bit more tenderness and to soften the outside of the ribs up just a shade, I wrap them in the foil, spray them with a little vinegar and then put them on for maybe 30 to 60 more minutes. But when they get to the right level of tenderness, I pull them off, let them cool and then we slice them up and we're gonna see if these are gonna be really special ribs or if they're just ho-hum. Check back in a few minutes. All right, it's been about an hour and these ribs are to the tenderness that I want, all done. But since I have two racks of each, I'm gonna glaze one rack of the Iberico ribs and one rack of the Costco ribs with some sauce. And today we're using Franklin Original. I think it's just really tasty. I like this sauce a lot. So that's what we're gonna use. So we'll glaze these two, then we'll have the ones that are unglazed. So we can try them both ways. So much rendered fat here. When I poke it, it squeezes out rendered fat. These are gonna be crazy juicy. This is awesome. It just pools around my fingers. Amazing. The glaze is set. Let's get these off. Here's one. Oh, that looks good. Not bad. For Costco ribs, these are looking really tasty. And then we have our Iberico ribs. And if you look at these, 
Look at all that rendered fat. That's just since the wrap. All that, that's just pure rendered fat. So these are gonna be awesome. And then, we got this guy. Iberico. And the last set of Costco ribs. They also look pretty darn good. Look at that, juicy. These are gonna be good, man. Okay, we've let these guys rest for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna slice them up and then give them a taste. We're gonna make kind of four piles of ribs. One of the plain salt and pepper Iberico, one of the Costco plain salt and pepper, and then one of each with the sauce that we added onto it to kind of glaze it. Then we're gonna taste all four and see what's what. Regular old Costco salt and pepper. Nothing fancy here, but these are good. Regular Costco, still pretty juicy, not bad. These look juicy, here we go. We got the Iberico salt and pepper only, and we're gonna slice these guys up. Okay, got great pullback here, so these should be meaty bites and still really juicy, so I'm excited about this for sure. Let's slice them up. They're just a juice geyser. Which is nice. Looking at this, that is juicy. There's so much intramuscular fat. Just, yeah, it is packed full of juice. All right, I'm excited. Oh, these are gonna be good. Oh man, these are gonna be good. Costco with sauce. This looks good, it smells great too. Let's slice her up. Costco ribs, that's pretty good. Sticky on top from the glaze. Juicy in there. Okay. This is gonna be a real throwdown. Costco with sauce. Those are gonna be hard to beat, man. Finally, the secret ribs of Machu Picchu. Whoa, look at this. Okay. That. See all of that liquefied fat in there crazy that's amazing uh, this side uh, oh, this is juice drip this is gonna be so good all right uh, why did you just... what is that noise it's a lawnmower. lawnmower people always have to mow their lawns or cut down <laughs> no trees. matter if it's the evening or the morning yeah, or it's the like day whenever, whenever we decide to film it's just like <laughs> okay so to do this taste test my wife is gonna help me, and so we're gonna go through and try the four different ribs and give our impressions. So first, we have our regular old Costco ribs. Mm. Mm. That's pretty good rib. The smoke is so good on it. Mm. I just wanna keep eating it. Just tastes everything normal. Really smoky and good. The, the pork itself doesn't really have a lot of flavor. It's just kind of in the background. It's not like when you taste beef, like there's a lot of beefy flavor. It's I know, I not dry, it. it's not crazy juicy, but it's plenty juicy. In my head, when I make ribs, they taste like that. Yeah, in my head, when I have the perfect rib, it's that. Okay, well thanks. Except maybe if there was the glazed one that I'm gonna try next, oh, but it's just sauce, gonna keep getting, you're gonna okay. give them to me so that they keep getting better each step. Okay, right? so here we have, here's your rib here. Okay. This is the Iberico, just salt and Normal. pepper. Okay. Yep. Wow. Almost like when you eat a sausage and it's just packed full of juice. Yeah. It reminds me of something too. A rib? I just got a bite that I thought had sauce on it. It was so sweet. It's just the, the, the fatty acid content of the fat in this thing. It, it's what gives it that unique flavor. And the diet, like they're eating acorns and stuff like <laughs> that. They get fat, but. Wow, yeah. This the is unbelievable. The texture reminds me of sausage. Mm-hmm. It is like, I guess the fat really does have its own texture because it is, that's exactly how sausage is. But it's so juicy, I mean, yeah. just, now to me that was like almost a perfect rib. I kind of like the first one better. Really? It's definitely juicier. Yeah, it's way juicier. There is a Costco glazed rib. Okay. That's really good. Mm. I think I'd still take the Iberico salt and pepper over this. I think my favorite first bite was the Costco plain. This is sauced 
Iberico. You ready for your mind to be blown? Okay. I wish I had done a blind taste that, test now. That just happened. Dude, look at the juice. This is crazy. Whoa. That just fell apart. Mm. This is a perfect rib. It's so heavy. Yeah. All the fat, <laughs> you feel it. Mm -hmm. But it makes it so juicy. This is the juiciest rib I've ever eaten. It's not even close. Wow. That one was my favorite. I would go glazed first, right? The, the glazed Iberico. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a better rib. <laughs> Those are so good. Second place, I'd go salt and pepper uh, Iberico. And then for some reason, with the Costco ones, I just like the salt and pepper more than the glazed. No idea why. What okay. do you think? I don't know. If you had to rank them. It's hard to evaluate when you just keep eating. No, I have to think about it. Um, have you ever had a rib that juicy, though? No. I'm going back to this one. The first one? Mm -hmm. See? Whoa. What? Take a bite of it now. I think that this is almost flavorless in comparison to these. I went back through and took bites. Yep. And I think the last one is my favorite. Yeah. It's, it's really rich. If you guys look at this rib, it is crazy juicy. Okay, so there is something behind the hype. So this really is, to me, kind of like the Wagyu of pork. And if you ever see them, like I just happened upon these, if you ever see them, pick them up, cook them, but don't tell anybody what they are. Tell them that they're regular ribs and you're gonna blow minds because they're gonna be like, how did you do this? What's going on? They are incredible. So. I really, really enjoyed these ribs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for doing the tasting with me, Erica. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. You can also join Patreon and make sure to join the Discord because there's a ton of great barbecue information there. We're giving stuff away. Just gave away the Fat Stack 80. We're giving away smokers and aprons and thermopens, stuff like that every month. So go check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Stealing a rib. Mm. Rib thief. Mm-hmm. <laughs>